Uh, let's talk to uh, the author of a book called Green Tyranny, uh, appropriately enough, uh, Rupert Darwall. Uh, good afternoon, Rupert. Good afternoon, Kevin. Uh, now, uh, Modi, uh, on one hand, I'm going to sort of praise him a bit, and then, on, then, then I'm going to change tack. But uh, I thought he made a good point when he said, look, you know, you call us the developing nations and we're trying to develop, and then you try to impose upon us all these green restrictions that don't allow us to develop. Uh, so, has he got a point? Oh, he's got, he's got a, a, a huge point. And it's a point, actually, that goes back right to the beginning of the whole UN climate process, where the developing nations carved out, effectively, an exemption from being subject to decarbonisation, because they quite rightly saw that before you decarbonise, you've got to carbonise. And uh, they need, <laughs> these, 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 these are nations that need to develop, they need more energy. They Part of progress for them is wiring up, connecting, uh, connecting their towns, cities and communities to a, a reliable grid and providing them with electricity. I mean, that, 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 that's the fundamental basis of modern civilization. So they want to join the modern, modern world um, and have electricity. And that means ha they, they're going to burn more energy. They're going to use more energy. Uh, indeed. Uh, sort of, as I say, changing directions with Narendra Modi. Uh, you know, he says that the Western world's promised the developing nations a hundred billion dollars a year to help them decarbonise. Uh, where is that money? So you haven't given it to us. Uh, so my thought was, uh, so what will you do with that then, Mr Modi? Uh, will you set, spend it on a rocket to go to Mars? Because you just sent one to the moon. I mean... Why is India classified as a developing nation when it has a very advanced space uh, program, has just become the second nation to land on the moon, uh, and that space program continues apace? Much better than ours in Britain. Well, I have to say, Kevin, in terms of their energy consumption, India remains a developing nation. I mean, they, the, 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 the per capita... Uh, consumption of electricity is really really low it's on a par with north korea we don't think of north korea as a rich rich nation so they have got there is a lot of growth there that will need a lot more electricity which will mean a lot a lot more carbon emissions and to go to your point about the 100 billion dollars a year if you if you remember in 2009 there was a, a crunch uh, un climate conference in copenhagen which which was going to save the planet i think that was the one gordon brown said there were 60 days or something to yeah. save the planet <laughs> yeah it came and went but anyhow it was there that hillary clinton who was um Secretary of State under President Obama turned up, rocked up and said, if you if you sign on the dotted line, we'll give you 100 billion US a year. And that's become part of the climate change negotiations. Needless to say, the 100 billion hasn't hasn't materialized. But there's a really important point, Kevin, that to compensate the developing world for going green, you're not talking about hundreds of billions, you're talking about trillions. It, yeah. it it's it's trillions of dollars um and w when it's put like that it's simply not going to happen it's a, it's a dream it's well it's actually not a dream it's a nightmare but the money's <laughs> not there uh, well the other uh as uh, al gore put it what, what was it the inconvenient truth that old green Rishi is going to have to confront when he gets there is the age-old problem of the fact here we are in Britain saying, oh, yeah, we're going to have inshore wind farms now, which you wrote about uh, very eloquently in the Daily Mail uh, the other day, a, a, a disastrous U-turn by the Prime Minister. But, you know, all this that we're doing here, the green tyranny... Uh, that is being imposed on Britain. I mean, is he? I know that Xi Jinping isn't going to the G20, but Chinese representatives will be there. Is he going to go up to them and say, "What is the point of Britain, uh, you know, cutting back and uh, you know, get, getting uh, pollution levels to a uh, really impressive less than one percent when you lot are ch churning out 28 percent of the world's pollution, uh, largely from your 1,100 coal fuel power stations. You're building 300 more, uh, and you're exploring uh, for more coal as well. You know, there's this ridiculous dichotomy between what 
places like Britain, which can't change the e ecological picture one bit because we're such small emitters of carbon, uh, and countries like China, Russia, India, America still, uh, even Australia, Brazil. Uh, you know, this, this, this whole green uh, syndrome, it's a joke, isn't it? Yeah, we can't. We kind of forget all the the, green, the net zero fanatics. Um, they that what they leave out of the picture, of course, as you point out, is that Britain's emissions are less than one percent of of global emissions. Uh, what we do has no effect, really, no measurable effect on um, atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide, which is the thing that drives climate change. And moreover, it's worse than that, because in 2008, uh, Parliament passed the Climate Change Act, which is how we got, we get, we're now legally committed to achieving net zero, or the government is legally committed to net zero. And that act, Kevin, at, is unilateral. It, it excludes the government being able to look at what other countries are doing and uh, changing the target on the basis of whether we're doing too much or too little. I mean, it is it is unilateral. It is insane unilateralism. Absolutely. And talking of insane, uh, we still cling, or the uh, the politicians in this country of all colours still cling to this delusion that somehow Britain, uh, in our uh, you know kind of. Uh, platonic perfect future will be fueled entirely by windmills and solar panels we won't we can't be and we've got rid of all of our proper backups so we have a completely dysfunctional energy system thanks to the green virtue signaling of generations of politicians and now we've got these idiot Tory backbenchers have persuaded uh, Rishi to uh, dramatically U-turn on his pledge not to build any more inshore wind farms. Uh, he's just being, he's flapping in the wind, isn't he? Yeah, he doesn't, I mean, he, he's trapped really, isn't he? he, he and he can't, the, the problem is the Conservatives have got, have been going down this road of this really bad energy policy of offshore wind and uh, putting all the all the all our bets do you remember boris johnson said he was good because of offshore wind he was going to turn britain into the saudi arabia of wind yes. I mean, it was complete completely bonkers i mean insane insane silly talk and um so he's really trapped by he's trapped by the past but it that does not excuse his his really pitiful uh a pitiful U-turn, and I think what we really need to put to sleep is British climate jingoism. We've had enough of it, yes. and it's not pay, it's not it's not the politicians who pay pay for climate. It's us in our electricity bills. Yeah, as I, I want to just stress, I've said this to my audience a million times, probably more. Nothing we can do in this country if, if we all went back to living in mud huts and went round on horse and carts had no electricity no petrol nothing uh, it would make no difference whatsoever to uh, the global ecology system uh, we would uh, we're just a minnows we, we're, we're irrelevant aren't we in the global picture yeah that's right i mean it's it, it's i think that what 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 rishi sunak and british uh, Successive British prime ministers, they like parading their green green yeah. virtue on the world stage, but we bear the cost. Yeah, and they yeah. think they think it's a vote yeah. winner. I've got bad news for them. It isn't. Nobody wants to pay more money uh, to be poor and colder. It's ridiculous, and one day they'll work this out. Rupert, great to talk to you. That's uh, Rupert Darwell, author of Green Tyranny.